Hey, nice to see you. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. How are you? Okay. Here, here a seat right here. Oh. Okay, the, the main act here, I'm John Furrier, Daniel Denise here, the CEO of UiPath. Uh, Daniel is a leader. I've been following UiPath really since the inception, um, and our company has been tracking you guys. Um, I think you guys were be the beginning of pre-AI, and I think RPA, as we know it, uh, process of, uh, robotic process automation, has been was the first wave of what I call pre-AI. So you guys see a lot of hype out there. Give the, give the story of UiPath and why you guys are positioned uh, or feel you're positioned to really capitalize on this AI as AI collides with RPA. Yeah, I think in a way uh, what we are trying to achieve with AI, with Agentic AI today and RPA kind of share the same goals. In a way we look at existing manual processes and we are trying to automate them by imitate the people, exactly how the people will build those processes. In the RPA world, we were just using uh, the user interface, so we were capture whatever keystrokes or mouse clicks they were doing in a logical way, and then we can repeat the process forever. With AI, but the, it's interesting, the, in the, the essence, it's a bit, it's kind of the same. It's an imitation of people. And that's a different type of technology. It's not, uh, we work quite a lot to make it reliable, secure, and to bring a, a solid governance into play. And for us, it's a natural extension into the agentic AI world. I would say in uh, what, many of our clients are doing right now. So they are looking into the processes where they have robots deployed already. And uh, they look at what are the capabilities that robots couldn't already automate it. And now they are inserting AI agents. And it's quite powerful to manage them in the context of the same platform. Daniel, you know, a lot of people here at the conference, you got a lot of entrepreneurs, you have a lot of leaders. Everyone's chasing AI, they see the benefit, everyone understands the benefit of uh, AI and they see the value. But the common themes of the successful, at least in the enterprise AI space, is words like end-to-end -end process, workflows, uh, data. These are the areas that seem to jump out at the key uh, innovators. They are really, and, and it's not common, you, you never hear that before. Now it's like the key words. Knowing the end-to-end, -end, knowing the process, this is what you've been doing, and now the automation with the agents are coming in. This is where everyone's focused. What's your view on this? Because the practicality, it may seem boring to get in the weeds of process, but that's where the value extraction is, and, and well, value creation and extraction. What's your view on this? Because this is what RPA was. It's like a building block, but like now we have AI at scale. What's your view on this practicality of the, of the workflows and the processes? Yeah, the emergence of uh, AI at scale created a much bigger need for orchestration right now. That was, uh, I think, a small software category, you know, a year ago, but now everybody is speaking about orchestration. We've been, uh, we kind of, out in our RPA world, we, we've built orchestration initially as, as a key way of deployment at scale. Because it's one thing to deploy one agent or one RPA bot, it's a different thing to deploy hundreds of them. So you, you will need to orchestrate between agents, robots, and people. And since AI, it's a, it's a probabilistic technology, most of the time you'll have to put people in the loop. And how, how does this orchestration work? And I think there are two schools of thoughts right now. One that thinks, we can put a master agent that is uh, going to choose dynamically the paths in the process, or we can put a workflow on the top, and we'll have agents for small pieces of the process. Our philosophy is that we will end up probably having both patterns. And for certain, like in customer service, it makes more sense to me to have like a master agent. But in certain uh, processes that are like procure to pay, order to cash, where you have a lot of fixed path already, there is no point in having this master agent. How many customers do you guys have? I know, and I, I should know the number, but I don't. What's in here in t over 10, 20,000? What's the number? Yeah, we have more than 10,000 enterprise customers. 
So what have you learned? Because now that agents are scaling and there's a lot of conversations around evaluation, agent tasks, task completion, what have you learned in our, on the RPA side that, that you're now doubling down on and uh, fellow entrepreneurs and fellow leaders out there are trying to get their arms around this? What, do, what have you learned? Uh, how to prepare, how to set up, what's the requirements for a, an agentic infrastructure? RPA is a horizontal technology. So we, uh, we, we had, uh, and we always, tr we, we were trying to build the horizontal platform. That, that was the key. It's kind of my biggest learning, it's, it's very difficult to build a horizontal platform. Uh, a key ingredient of our success has been, we've been early on, RPA is becoming a, a, a big category in, in, in the days, and we were associated with the category name. AI, it's a much bigger space. It's very difficult for a player to be associated with AI. So I think it's going to be more difficult to build horizontal, uh, as, as a horizontal platform in, in this space. So I think that the best way to get into AI is to, to get into verticalized agents find something that you really deeply understand the business process and add value, and maybe associate to one of the few horizontal platforms that will emerge. Yeah, I was just talking with Martin Mikos, who's emceeing. He's a legendary entrepreneur, open source legend. And we were talking about how um, startups can come in and get the white space. You mentioned vertical. Vertical models are hot right now in the sense that people are recognizing that they are good opportunities to innovate in a vertical space. You don't have to be horizontal, to your point. How do you see the convergence between horizontally scalable data platforms and say vertical specialization? Because I think a lot of opportunity, whether it's a business customer of UiPath or an innovator, if they have domain expertise, they don't have to be horizontal, they're vertical. So how do you see that connecting? Can you share your vision on, on, on the, the right approach, whether I'm implementing or designing uh, a system that's gonna take advantage of all this data? Well, I think everything that is happening in the industry right now supports the connected world of agents, A to A, MCP servers. And we, we, for instance, at UiPath, we provide this orchestration engine that can connect with the agents built externally or internally. We have a partnership with companies like Langchain or Llama Index, Crew AI, open source, agentic frameworks. And while you can build with this framework, we can deliver these agents securely uh, with great governance and pair it with actions within the context of our own orchestration. You've built a global company from Budapest to, to New York. Um, what's the European angle? What's your global vision? Because Sovereignty has been mentioned in multiple conversations I've had here this week, sovereignty AI, sovereign cloud, sovereign data. As the world gets flat, as they say, what's the global vision? How should Europe think about agents, fleets of agents, uh, competitive opportunity, uh, entrepreneurial enablement? What's your vision on the global landscape? I know you got, you're proud of your European roots. Um, share your thoughts there. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very proud of my European roots. I, despite the fact that I lived in US for maybe the last 20 years, I, uh, I still have my, my personal life, it's much more tied to, to Europe. I think one of the trap of European entrepreneurs is to stay within Europe, and particularly within their countries. If you live in a country big enough, like France, Germany, UK, you will tend to work closely with the customers here. While I think that's naturally limiting in, in your potential, we have started in Romania. Romania doesn't have its own market, basically. And we are global in, from day one. And an interesting story about us and about RPA, we, we found the most successful place in Japan. So we, uh, we, we didn't scale initially in Europe or US. We didn't find really the pockets to scale, but we found some great partners in Japan and we scaled our platform and we've, we've built really orchestration at scale in using, uh, you know, our, the Sumitomo Mitsui Bank in Japan. So I think for, for European, if we speak, 
right now it's clear we are in between, uh, you know, China and U.S., and we have to build our own destiny. I believe that uh, defense industry would be amazing in Europe, so I think many companies probably should, uh, should think of uh, connecting themselves within the defense industry. How is the role of government? There's been a conversation around agentic governments, um, and obviously robotics is going to come here. We always talk about when is the population of robots going to be greater than humans. Uh, also, we've heard, uh, I've interviewed Mark Benny up at Salesforce. He said that he's going to be the last CEO that actually manages people. Um, agents will be out there. Um, how do people leverage the agents, specifically government, agentic government, for instance? What's the opportunity? I think that uh, there are some governments in the world that uh, are very active. And, and I know from the RPA and automation world, like even governments like Singapore or in Dubai, I think in, uh, unfortunately for Europe, they are much more advanced in using automation and I'm sure AI. So my experience showed me that we sell a lot more to our federal business in US, even in UK that's at European Union, at European Commission. And to me, to me, it's a pity, and I'm not sure this is going to... I would love to see a dramatic change in approach and say, we have to embrace all in, go from the top, let's, let's just do it. Because otherwise, it's clearly, we will, be, we will be left behind. And all this movement... I think right now, we, industry is trying to figure out how to deploy AI at scale. To me, it's, it's less needed, you know, to regulate it rather than to adopt it, accept it, you know, go go with the positive of the technology. Yeah, being positive is great. Uh, I know we have a minute left. I want to just get your thoughts as a founder of UiPath. You are in the now full AI world. RPA was to me a lead in. Uh, a lot of aging companies will fail, as we predict. Um, not all will succeed because it's hard. It's not easy um, at scale. As a founder now looking at the AI tailwind you have, what's your mindset and what are you focused on? What are you optimizing around for UiPath? Um, what's, your, what's your focus? Well, we, we focus on execution. For us, we have an incredible opportunity because we are incumbent. And as I told you, 10,000 companies, we know very well business processes. We, we have really good established relationship with, uh, with companies. And um, we actually love to work with many startups and try to bring them uh, to market. Right now, for instance, one of the, we acquired a startup in UK called Peak. This is a vertical AI that is doing like uh, price and inventory management. And it's been very successful for us because we, we can deploy them in a mu with a much larger base. They, they, they had a GTM problem, not, not, a, not a technical problem. And I think many startups will find themselves having a distribution problem. And partnering with a company like us, I think, will help tremendously. Yeah, look, you're open to partnerships. Of course. All right, final question. I know we're time out, but I want to get it in because a lot of entrepreneurs are here in the room, uh, in this show. People are going to be watching. Uh, there's a huge entrepreneurial uh, surge going on now. Uh, young talent coming in, senior people that have systems experience. Um, are coming into the game. What's your advice to them as a founder in this era, if you had <laughs> your younger self, what would you advise um, people starting in getting into AI? What's your, uh, what's your playbook? What would you do? What would you do? I think you have to run as fast as you can. It's the fastest company will always win. Just pick up your space, go fast. If you fail, it's absolutely no problem. You go to your next. It's, it's much easier to say, I know, but in the end, this is the only playbook. You can do it. And, uh, and I think we live in an amazing world right now where if you fail, it really doesn't matter. It's not the end of the career. Even in Europe, I think failure is starting to be embraced. But just go fast. The moment when you start to doubt yourself are the moments of stagnation. You are, you are, it's clearly someone will go faster. If it's not you, there will be someone else. Yeah, it's a special time. Daniel, thank you so much. Put it together for Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.